you consider HVAC systems, there are a couple of main types of systems, central systems and self-contained unit packages. Central systems will have subsystems for heating and cooling with the energy conversion taking place in a central location, such as an air handler using steam and chilled water and reheat water subsystems. The energy conversion typically involves heat exchangers or coils, for example, steam coils, chilled water coils, reheat coils. Subsystems may also include end use types of systems such as terminal unit fans and reheat coils. End use systems can be single or multiple zones. Typically these central systems will have lower operating costs but their control systems and sequence of operation will be more complex. Self-contained unit packages are systems such as rooftop HVAC systems, uh, room air conditioners, uh, heat pump packages, etc. An understanding of how an air conditioning system works is important to know when looking at HVAC system controls. Air being supplied to a space from an air conditioning system is typically 20 degrees colder than the air in the space. For example, with a room temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature of the air leaving the cooling coil in an HVAC system would typically be 52 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So this colder air as it passes through the occupied space will pick up heat and the warmed air exits the room through the return air grills in the room, passes through the return duct, and returns to the air handler to be reconditioned. At the air handler, warm air returned from the space mixes with outside air for a fresh air makeup, passes through filter sections, a preheat coil, and then the cooling coil. So this is called mixed air at that, at that point. The mixed air temperature is reduced through heat transfer from the cooling coil. The cooled supply air then leaves the cooling coil and the cycle is repeated. If we look at the chilled water system used with an HVAC system, it's also considered a central system due to the fact that it can serve multiple units and multiple cooling coils distributed throughout the building. For the chilled water system, the chilled water circulating through the coil tubes in an HVAC system returns through chilled water return piping after picking up the heat from the air through the coil. The heat is given up in the refrigeration system at the evaporator and returned to the cooling coil to repeat the cycle. The evaporator is a heat exchanger that takes heat from the chilled water and then flows by conduction into refrigerant piping. The liquid refrigerant in the tubes boils to a vapor and removes the heat from the water next to convey the heat to the compressor and subsequently to the condenser. The last step is an outside air to be drawn across a cooling tower, thus removing the heat from the water through evaporation. A common type of system that I've seen in my work history is the rooftop packaged air handler type of unit. This unit will actually look kind of like a boxcar, and it'll have all the main components contained inside, fans or blowers, steam or hot water coils, chilled water coils, filters, humidifiers, as well as control systems that would all be installed in the unit. I've seen many advantages with this type of unit. It was on the roof and not taking up valuable space inside the building. It's also convenient for repairs or maintenance work to take place. And then it was also very easier to connect condensate water to roof drains instead of being inside the building. So just some practical ideas there from my experience. It's important to note that no single set of environmental conditions in a space can be suitable to everyone. Also, the more uniform the temperature is within a space, the better. Hot and cold zones should be avoided. Consistent temperatures over time is also best, avoiding rapid changes. ASHRAE Standard 62 provides recommendations for minimum air ventilation rates per person in occupied spaces. In addition, local building codes may dictate minimum ventilation rates for commercial buildings and work environments. The building departments in the local jurisdiction should be contacted to verify this. So the ventilation rate serves to dilute any carbon dioxide in the space generated by the occupants, as well as other contaminants that might be generated in the space. 
fresh oxygen is also supplied for the occupants through fresh air ventilation. On occasion, higher ventilation rates may be necessary to control odors or any special activities taking place within the space that can generate contaminants or pollutants that will need to be removed for the benefit and safety of the occupants. For example, if adequate air conditioning is not provided to a space, any heat gains will not be properly dealt with, uh, building up to a level that will be uncomfortable. Considering air pressure, a key factor is that air in a space flows from zones of high pressure to zones of lower pressure. So the best arrangement is to have an occupied space at a higher pressure than the surrounding area. So this arrangement will reduce the outside air infiltration into the space. This also helps keep the building clean without having air contaminants, dust, odors, etc. enter the space. So this parameter may be especially important for certain facilities such as hospitals, laboratories, pharmaceutical plants, computer chip manufacturing, etc. Typical values for air pressurization can be from 0.01 to 0.05 inches water column. A moderate amount of air pressure is best, otherwise you can experience operational type issues such as doors opening hard against the air pressure or not staying closed possibly requiring a larger door closer to hold against the air pressure. Some facilities need to pay special attention to this condition, such as, from my experience, in paper mills and other industrial facilities where there's a large amount of exhaust air flow required for the production operation. This can cause outside doors to be severely pulled from the outside to a closed position. One solution I used was to add makeup air to the facility to try to equalize the pressure and avoid the huge negative pressure in the building.